Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. The most commonly asked questions these days, it's about the electric cars. And they always ask me, David, which one should we buy? It's going to be really interesting this year because of the introduction by Hyundai with the Aonic 5. And of course, Toyota is also introducing an all new platform in the form of a BZ4X. So which one would I buy if I were in the marketplace for electric cars? Let's find out. So this year, it's a fascinating year because we're going to have a lot more choices in terms of electric cars. And of course, the uh, major automakers such as Hyundai and Toyota is quickly becoming the mainstream. They are still far behind the market leader Tesla, but based on my driving experience with this uh, Aonic 5, you know what? These guys are going to become better and better in terms of driving performance and the overall quality. And I think this Aonic 5 might be the best choice in terms of electric car this year. As you guys all know, I own many Toyota cars, so obviously I'm also considering the BZ4X, which should come out sometime in the summertime, perhaps August, September. And uh, since none of us have driven that uh, BZ4X car, we can't do a direct comparison yet. But let me do a hypothetical comparison between this amazing Aonic 5 and Toyota's new BZ4X, and I'm going to walk you through my decision-making process uh, as to which one to buy, because indeed, I am buying an electric car this year, so I have to decide which way to go. So far, I'm being very impressed with this Aonic 5, which I've had for two weeks now. Now, there is a fundamental difference between the Toyota's approach and the Hyundai's approach, because this one is based on the rear wheel drive platform. In fact, you can buy it as a two wheel rear wheel drive or all wheel drive in the form of an Aonic 5. And in Toyota's case, it's based on the front wheel drive platform, also all new. And so you can get it as a two wheel drive, front wheel drive, or also all wheel drive. They both have a similar range, slightly better in the Aonic 5. Uh, and uh, also the Hyundai has a little more advantage in terms of power and acceleration. In terms of driving, we don't know yet. We'll soon find out in a few months or so. Uh, but so far, I'm impressed enough with uh, Hyundai that if I were to decide in the next three to four months which one to buy, this is the one I'm going to get. So let me walk you through the exterior, the interior, and then uh, also take this guy for a drive and give you a hypothetical explanation as to how the Aonic 5 might compare with the BZ4X. As I mentioned, I've been driving this car for two weeks now, and everywhere I go, people stop me and ask me, what is this, and do I like it? So obviously, Hyundai did an amazing job with the styling. In fact, I keep joking that if uh, Apple ultimately introduces a new car, electric car that is, it's gonna look something like this perhaps because it looks so cool, it's refreshing, it's a big departure from traditional crossover design. And all the intricate details on this Aonic 5 is the most impressive thing. I think Hyundai, having hired some top designers from other automakers, have uh, gone through much further than traditional manufacturers in terms of styling and, and elements of design. So you can see this kind of geometric design inside and the intricate patterns right on the uh, bumper here and what I call kind of almost like um, a Lego design or geometric design, however you want to call it. I mean, who will come up with something like this? Hyundai is a bit of an innovator and they take more risk than uh, traditional companies like Toyota or Nissan. And uh, you know what? They're doing an amazing job. I'm in love with the design. And even as an engineer, I'm uh, impressed because of the, the amount of technological things they will have to overcome to create all these little cool features. And not easy, not cheap, 
but they've done it. And yet this car is still priced quite, uh, quite reasonable uh, and it's available in a few different uh, trims and models. This is a top of the line version uh, and uh, the styling is impressive and of course it's always subjective. Now what about compared to the Toyota BZ4X? Obviously, that's, again, more of a personal nature. It looks cool by Toyota standard. It's still a very conservative design, not anywhere like this. Uh, so in terms of pure styling, even when you walk to the side profile here, I think the Hyundai uh, will look better, and generally speaking, even many years down the road, because it's going to look refreshing. It's going to always look up to date, and it's not going to be outdated even five, six years down the road. The profile is kind of like, uh, almost like a five-door hatchback design, but it is a crossover, and uh, you've got a uh, cool uh, door handle that pops out, much like Tesla. But this can be a little bit finicky at times, but it's okay, in terms of design, it works. Now, one thing that keeps coming up with everyone who's driven the Aonic 5, and that includes me, is the controversial decision by Hyundai to eliminate the rear wiper blade. Now, I'm sure that they've done some engineering studies and testing, uh, which shows that without the wiper blade, this will more or less stay clear. But that hasn't been my experience, at least here in the West Coast, where we get lots of rain and uh, dirt gets picked up on the gravel road and so forth. This window is dirty, really honestly, within 24 hours. So um, functionally speaking, it makes no sense to eliminate the wiper blade. And I hope Hyundai will uh, redesign that part and retrofit something in the next few years. But it needs one. So yes, you can clean the window. And yes, it's definitely better looking without the wiper blade. Um, but it doesn't make any sense. So that would be the only thing uh, that kind of uh, surprises me about the way they design and engineer this vehicle. But perhaps not a big deal if you live in a warmer climate where it doesn't rain so much or where you don't get too much winter weather. So whether this is an issue with you or not, well, it comes down to the type of weather you're uh, dealing with in your own hometown. Aside from a rear wiper blade issue, we got more cool design in the back with a geometric design that goes all the way with a floating Alnick 5 emblem here and uh, even just the aluminum finish here and more intricate patterns. I mean, this is amazing. It looks like uh, something that came straight out of a concept car. And once again, this is much cooler looking than more traditional design from Toyota in terms of their BZ4X. I mean, granted, their design is also quite fascinating for Toyota anyways. It's a step forward. Um, but I don't think there's anything that comes as close as Hyundai in terms of the design overall. Front or rear, I'm in love with the design and it is by far the best looking electric car out there. So that's the exterior size and I did a quality check all the way through from front to back. I did my usual gap analysis to make sure that the panels line up. Uh, and everything actually looks as good as something out of Japan. You might not believe me, but I checked the paint job as a quality engineer's audit style, and I checked the gaps, and everything is up to my standard in terms of what I expect from a world-class manufacturer. Now let's go inside and take a look to see what's uh, so cool about this Aonic 5, because we're going to find some more surprises. Okay, so we're inside the uh, Honda Alnick 5 now. And uh, you know what, if Steve Jobs was uh, alive today and he was in charge of designing a car, I'll bet you anything it's going to look something like this. Because uh, this combination of uh, airy feel, the design materials and all of the things that goes into this particular interior uh, result in a refreshing uh, design that is unique to Aonic 5. It still uses kind of traditional dual panel design that you see more and more often and of course it still has the Hyundai interface uh, but the combination of the way they put everything together uh, makes this thing a real cool place to spend time. Compare that to a Toyota BZ4X which is also a, a bit of a departure from their traditional design, but it won't look anywhere as interesting, I think, anyway, 
compared to the Ionic 5. Now one uh, shortcoming is uh, in attempt to make everything as digital as possible, which is a trend these days, uh, sometimes I find it frustrating. Something as simple as turning on the, um, the heater for the steering or making some adjustments. I have to always go into the infotainment system and try to figure things out. And so while they've done as much as they can to simplify everything and to give us some buttons, we, for example, the volume and the temperature and so forth is still somewhat physical, uh, it's still kind of awkward and I wish car companies stop making everything uh, digital format because it just doesn't make sense to me. But yes, it does look cooler this way. Aside from that, uh, lots of room. Thankfully, there's no uh, engine or drivetrain taking up space inside this uh, vehicle. So there's uh, so much space in here that uh, if you have to carry people for a long drive, you know what? It's going to be super comfortable. And even the center console goes forward and backward. Uh, something you usually find in kind of a minivan design. So you can definitely use Alnick 5 as a, a long range driver because he has a good range also. Uh, and uh, it's a really comfortable place to spend time. What about things like a seat comfort, you know, other things to do with ergonomics? Once again, until we get the Toyota BZ4X, it's hard to do a direct comparison. Uh, I'm generally speaking very happy with uh, overall uh, ergonomics, other than the fact that there's too many buttons missing, I still think. Uh, and uh, also the uh, lighting effect at night is super cool. You get this kind of a shaded look and even the, the speakers are lighted and you can change the colors and all that stuff so uh, I'm still really taken back by the overall design it's amazing that you can buy a car for this price these days that looks truly expensive inside another cool feature of this Alnick 5 is this kind of Ottoman style thing that you can do with the driver's side where there's a leg support that can come up and you can recline the seat and just be comfortable and rest so if you're waiting for someone and you need to kill time you know what, this is the best driver's seat you can find. Uh, also, Hyundai has equipped the Alnick 5 with the augmented reality uh, HUD or head-up display, and it looks so realistic when you're driving that uh, compared to other HUD, well, there's no comparison because it really looks like it's floating uh, in the air. We do get the big um, moon roof here or panoramic roof and it closes in open really cool fashion as well. So lots of interesting things to um, learn on this uh, Aonic 5. It's almost infinite amount of things you can do if you spend the time. And it's something that I think uh, Toyota might have a hard time catching up because in terms of the pure design perspective, this is probably more interesting than the Toyota BZ4X. Okay, so we are now on the road with Alnick 5, and how does it drive? And do I think that it might drive better than the um, BZ4X? Well, none of us have driven the BZ4X, of course. That thing's not out yet, but we can make some predictions because uh, we own a Toyota RAV4 Prime right now, in fact, two of them. So I'm very familiar, and I've been driving back and forth between the RAV4 Prime and this Alnick 5, assuming that the BZ4X drives somewhat similar to the Prime, which is a bit of a speculation at this moment, uh, we can make some guesstimate as to how the Alnick 5 might compare to the Toyota electric car. Now, first thing uh, I want to say is that uh, surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, the Alnick 5 drives a lot like the RAV4 Prime. In fact, driving back and forth between the two throughout the last two weeks, convinced me that uh, maybe Hun the Hyundai engineers benchmarked a RAV4 or RAV4 Prime in terms of having the right balance between comfort and performance. Now even compared to the Toyota RAV4 Prime, which I'm very familiar with, this thing drives a little bit sportier, a bit more balanced, and the ride is even uh, smoother. Uh, overall, the balanced feel that they were able to achieve in this Aonic 5 in terms of uh, handling the ride characteristic and the performance is top notch. I think they dialed it just correctly because it's extra smooth, it's ultra refined, it's very quiet, and yet I still get sufficient road feel uh, in terms of the steering. A lot of the 
electric car manufacturers struggle to give us any kind of feedback on the steering because uh, they tend to overemphasize comfort uh, and sacrifice the steering characteristic. But in Aonic 5, you get decent amount of road feel, not sports car territory, mind you, uh, but uh, it does have sufficient uh, uh, ride characteristic and steering characteristic that makes me believe that there is some performance element embedded into this car. Also, if you put on to the different mode, a driving mode that is, it does impact the overall feel of the car, not that much, but put on the sports mode and it does uh, perform a little bit stiffer and the steering gets a little bit heavier. Overall, in terms of the market that this is intended to go after, Hyundai did a perfect job of balancing out all of the things that matter to the type of buyers that will uh, actually purchase this vehicle. And I'm convinced that there's nothing else that comes close to this Aonic 5 at this point in time. We will have to see if the BZ4X actually exceeds my expectation uh, after it comes out in summertime. So I'm looking forward to driving and comparing that. But if you were to ask me right now, which car would I buy? based on everything I know about the BZ4X, I would probably still pick this one just because I love the design, the cool factor, and all things to do with the design elements of this. As an engineer, you have to appreciate the fact that there was a lot of emphasis placed on making this car look uh, absolutely futuristic, at the same time uh, functional, um, despite some struggles I have with the infotainment system. And most of all, the driving character is some of the best I've seen in this type of segment. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about the driving because uh, the driving selector is also a bit strange. You got a stalk here that you dial forward and backward. I got used to it so it's not a problem but at first it does feel a little odd um, to have a stock mounted one but that's okay they're trying to be different but what I wanted to point out to you is that uh, the best way to figure out whether the engineers did a good job with a suspension design is to kind of wiggle this back and forth and obviously we don't have a, a track here to really take this to a limit and you can tell the way that the car follows that line and the way the steering provides feedback to your hand is uh, really well done. So we call that kind of um, on center feel. So when you try to move away from the center, does it, does it feel like the steering wants to come back to the, the pointed center location? And it does with this car. So um, good steering effort, really, really smooth ride, a very quiet environment. And if you step on the pedal, it, this thing just accelerates like crazy. So, so let me see if I can demonstrate uh, just a little bit here. Uh, I'll just step on it uh, for a short time. <laughs> so it's literally a rocket ship, which is the case with many electric cars. But in this particular one with dual motors, zero to 60 in about five seconds or so. Wow. You just cannot believe until you drive it, especially if you've never driven an electric car, you've got to try it because it's going to surprise you. Even if you're a type of person who are really looking forward to buying a kind of sports performance sedan or a crossover, it's hard to beat the acceleration from uh, this Aonic 5. So at the end of the day, which one would I buy? The Aonic 5 or the BZ4X? Well, based on everything I know about the BZ4X, I will pick this one over the uh, Toyota version if I were to buy today or even in six month time. Because the Aonic 5 has uh, more power, uh, more performance, it has longer range, probably for about the same price as a BZ4X. Now Toyota might have some edge in terms of uh, manufacturing quality, but we don't know that yet, of course, because the car is yet to be here for my inspection. But assuming that there are no other surprises with the BZ4X, this one is probably where I will put my money in. I just wish that Hyundai will somehow find a way to retrofit rear wiper blade and then it's near perfect. So that's it for now, folks. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I hope you enjoyed the video of the Aonic 5 compared to Toyota BZ4X. A lot more things to come your way, but I'm signing off for now. Thank you again.